Hold on. What are you giving them back? Um, I think what I'm giving them back, man, is um, what they've been waiting for. You know what I mean? Um, skills. What? Bless up, bless up, bless up. I have returned for another episode of the Troy Graham Experience. Bless up to one and all. And as you can see, I'm not alone today. I have a very talented guest in the house. That goes by the name of, uh, he goes by a lot of names. But I know him as Terrence. Terrence Hawkins, a.k.a. the Duke of Comedy, a.k.a. AKA, you know, walking the path of his dream. And um, there's a lot of AKAs in, in his life. I got to turn off the YouTube because I'm hearing myself twice. Okay, there, there you go. But yes, 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 yes. We got a guest in the house. There's an echo, though, brother. I don't know if you can hear it. Nah, I can't. I can't hear an echo at all. It's actually, you're, you're very clear. Okay. okay. I, I can hear it. That's the thing. Give me one second to clear it up, and then, then we're going to get started, all right? Right on, bro. I think I think I know exactly what it is. There it is. I got YouTube on twice. Okay. So, yes. Did that do yeah, it? We have the, yeah, we had the Duke of Comedy in the house, and the man who wears, wears many hats, as they say, heavy is the head that wears... Where's the crown? But this man seems to be carrying it well. Terrence, the uh, multi talented, multi level, multi personality. Tokens. Go ahead, brother. Tell them, tell them, tell the world who you are. Well, you you told him pretty much. <laughs> Terrence August, the Duke of Comedy. Um, I'm a father, a husband, a brother, a son. I mean. Um, I'm 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 just a human being trying to be human. So we're gonna start getting into it a little bit once the crowd starts crawling in here. That's so, what's happening. You know, just, uh, I guess you could share how you actually got started, man, at, uh, with comedy or anything else that you're doing at the moment. Well, I, I'll start in in order. All right. Um, I became an actor first. Um, uh, I had a teacher by the name of Bob Mostow, uh at Paint Branch High School. Um, it was my junior year, and uh, I was taking theater as just as a regular class, just get some credits to graduate, I guess. And we had uh, an assignment to do a monologue, and then we had to pick a monologue. He gave us a list of monologues to pick from. And I was dragging my feet on picking the monologue. Um, every day he would ask me to go, am I ready for my monologue? And I was like, no, I haven't yet chosen one. So he just happened to pull one from the actual fall play that was in production at the time. And he gave me a monologue from it. And he made me do it in front of the class which was, you know, a part of the grade. Um, you had to do an oral presentation and I did it. And I didn't know that it was an actual monologue from the play that was in production at the time. And um, I guess I nailed it because he was like, uh, come to rehearsal tonight. You have just became the understudy to the only black guy in the cast. And I was like, that's racist, but okay. <laughs> so I, I showed up. And um, the guy, Kevin Bradford L, he ended up going, he was on a basketball team and he ended up not coming to rehearsal for whatever reason. And when he didn't come to rehearsal, I had to step in in the lead and he became my understudy after that day. And that's when I first hit the proscenium stage in the musical comedy murders of 1940. And then it went on from there to do several more productions in high school. And then I started to get into uh, doing stuff with the church and then just various plays just started coming my way. And I was just 
just on stage and that I fell in love with going into the dressing room, getting dressed and putting on the stage makeup and going through the costume changes. And I, I kind of fell in love with it. I was like, I can see myself doing this for real. And um, it just, it grew, it grew from there. My love for the stage definitely grew from there. And it wasn't until I went into the Marine Corps where I became uh comically funny on stage. Uh, that was my first time ever getting on stage. We had this thing called a health and comfort. Um, and my staff sergeant came up to me and was like, get on stage and make everybody laugh like you do at work. And I'm like, what? That's no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> like, that's not what I came in here for. And they was like, either you're going to do it or you're going to get duty. And I was like, I did it. So I got up there and just started making fun of all of my superior officers and my sergeants and my staff sergeants, and I was good at it. That's when the bug bit me. Then I went to Hawaii. When I got to Hawaii, that was the that was the tell all. They had this thing over there called First Fridays, and they were bringing comedians that's been on TV over to Hawaii. And the guy that was hosting that show every First Friday was due to leave the island, so they needed a host for it. So they put a contest out there and said, we're going to have a contest to get to see who wants to be the host. And I was like, all right. And all my friends was like, man, you got to do that. And I was like, no, I don't. I'm not doing that. And they was like, we dare you to do it. And come on, man, I grew up in Northwest Park. You can't dare me to do anything. So when I got dared, I jumped, <laughs> jumped on the stage and it was me and another guy who came in, uh, we tied for first and we got to alternate Fridays. He would do it one month, I did it the next. And then it that was it, man. I came home and got with a kid, by the, well, a guy by the name of Billy the Kid. And he put me on my first DC stage. And it was, skies was the limit from there. I just worked with so many people, been around so many people. I had the opportunity to uh, work at a real comedy club at the Riot at Comedy Theater. Um, and met many, 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 many more uh, A-list, streamlined, uh, mainstream comedians. Your, your mic's muted. Yeah, you know, you can feel free to name drop if you want. Go ahead. Oh, man. Uh, Dick Gregory became uh, one of my mentors. Paul Mooney. Uh, Joe Claire came through. Uh, who else did I work with? Tony Roberts, Tony Woods, uh, Chris Thomas, Sylvia Traymore Morrison. Uh, Sylvia Traymore Morrison and Chris Thomas was actually the ones that gave me my name in comedy. I was going by the name of Terrence the Comedian for years. Like when bland. I huh? That was pretty bland for you. Yeah, bland. right. It was. But, I, you know, I mean, I wasn't really worried about what my name was. I was worried more about what my content was going to be when I got on stage and was I going to be funny? Um, because it became staged at one point to where it wasn't being natural. And and that that's what that's what a lot of people misconstrue when they say, oh, you got to write, you got to write, you got to write. You got to write you. You can't just write what you think is funny. You got to write you. You got to write your story. It's got to be, you got to be transparent through what you do on stage. And if you're not doing that, you're not being authentic. Um, and the audience, they're like dogs in water. They can sense fear. They can sense when you're not being authentic. They can sense when you're uh, being hacky, which is plagiarism, plagiarizing uh, other people's jokes and just, you know, they, they, they can tell. So for a long time, I was, I was having that hard time with being uh, never hacky because I never did hack jokes. It was just right. having a hard time being transparent and being authentic. You had to right. find your rhythm. Oh, no, no doubt. And once that happened, man, it was over yeah. with. Yeah. I was, I was, I always, said that, uh, that I always said that writing. Go on mute for me real quick, parents. Let me see something. Okay, there it is. Yeah. Always said that writing and, and uh, 
acting and doing all that, that should be the most honest thing that you do, especially the writing part of it. You shouldn't, uh, cause you shouldn't lie to yourself once you, once you get started, you should just give of yourself and who, you know, some people would appreciate it. Some will accept it and some won't. Your job is not to please everybody. Your job is just to know that you gave the best of you, but come on back in here. Absolutely. That is absolutely the truth. Um, it, it's so hard though. It's so hard to, to, to be transparent because a lot of stuff you don't want to let people in on. You know what I mean? It, it, but it's, it's some, it's some, it's some funny in the truth. You know, sometimes the truth can be hilarious as hell at your expense to other people, but you just got to have that, that non fear factor and be ready to just go be transparent and don't be afraid to let people in on, you know, certain things, you know what I mean? So it, it, it it was it was a journey and I appreciated it. I appreciate it. You know, I stepped away when I when my son was born. I, I kind of stepped away from the comedy stage okay. to really be to him what I never had. Right. You, know, right. you 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 know who your who your father is and you be around him, but it's not in the sense of being reared. Right. Time. Um, absolutely. So I definitely just wanted to make sure that I was overly there for him. You know what I mean? I didn't want to miss anything. And to this um, day, um, I haven't missed anything. Um, the, yeah. kid, the kid is 10. Um, <laughs> he's definitely blossomed into his own character because he is a he is a he's a character of his own. And he is, oh my goodness, <laughs> personality. You better tell him. Yeah, you, you better tell him about my nephew's uh, skills on the court. Oh man, yeah, that's that goes without a given. Um, just making him work, making him uh, acquire a work ethic. Because as a child, you only think fun, right? But here's a reality uh, check that I got from a, a coach that I was dealing with. Um, we would we were coaching our kids together on a, um, a basketball team on the AAU circuit. He was like, "Man, we got to let these kids be kids because they're an adult way longer than they are actually your kids." And then I was like, "Damn, you're right. They're only kids for 11 years. After 11 years, you become a preteen. After preteen, you're a damn teenager." And then it goes from teenager into uh, adulthood, young adult into adulthood. So you don't have that much time to be a kid, right? So, but as a kid, that's where you form your most uh, structured habits. So my focus with my son was to give him a work ethic. Let him see me get up every day and go hard. Go, go to work and work hard. Come home and play hard. I wanted him to see that because it's important. It's important. Uh, I can say this that knowing you, you got to go on mute for me because our mic echo for some reason when we're both on the same time. But yeah, I, I can say this from knowing you all, all these years is that it's like God was preparing you because you're the youngest of three. You know, you could tell that story. But, you know, everything you told us so far about uh, how the teacher got you ready in school and you then you had to do that play, which didn't sound like it was an easy one. Then you went to the Marines and he just said, well, go out and do what you do. Like it's natural for you to just make people laugh. Right. And then uh, how you met so and so and you got to meet Paul Mooney and everybody else. And then you had to find yourself while you practice in your craft in front of a bunch of people, because D.C. is a rough crowd. They rough, man. N not a rough crowd, the roughest crowd. Um, you I do comedy, rough, man. I can't say that. Nah, New New York ain't rough. They rude. You know what I mean? N New York, New York will, will will come in there expecting to heckle no matter who you are or what you can do. They won't even give you a chance. They'll hear your name and who you are, 
like and where you're from and if they not vibing with your city your ass is grass in new york and that, and that's just the bottom line dc dc these jokers are just some ignorant thugs they come to the comedy show they'll come sit right up on the stage and they'll go And you're like, what in the hell is wrong with you? Like, who who pissed you off? And they will sit there and look at you until you make them laugh. And if you don't come in there making them laugh and doing, uh, uh, just being entertaining to them, then you ain't going to make it. You ain't going to make it. My battery is running low. I got to plug up. Give me a second, bro. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, well, while he plugs up, I'll just do some talking. You know, he uh, he, he did some boxing too when he was coming up. I'm gonna see if I get him to tell some other stories once he gets the battery all charged up. He could honestly tell you. All right, no, 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 I'm, I'm in. I'm plugged. Okay, I got you. I got you. I'm, I'm feeling it. You trying to get right me there. to tell what kind of story? About about your time in the boxing gym, man. Because you know, I talk so much stuff on here that people don't believe. Half the stuff I say, but go ahead and tell some of those stories in the box, then Jim. Then you get back to your life. Okay. Um. So let's talk about going to the uh, boys and girls club up in Rockville. Um. <laughs> I got in some trouble. I got in some trouble when I was when I was younger, and there was a guy that was working at the the boys and girls club up in Rockville. The, and they had a boxing gym in there. And I literally was supposed to be up there to clean up. And um, <laughs> nobody was in there one day. And I went in there. And I was trying to hit the speed bag. And he was like, you interested in boxing? I was like, I fight my brothers every day. So I think I box already. And then he was like, whatever. You're going to come in here when the boxers are in here and, and we're going to see what you can do. And I'm like, what? So, <laughs> oh, man, true story, man. I uh, came in. I paid my little IBF uh, fees and they was like, OK, you're an amateur. And I was like, I'm an amateur. What? They was like, you're an amateur boxer. I was like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not a boxer. And I got the training and I was in there with, you know, Simon Brown used to come to our gym. Uh, damn. Uh, Joppy. William Joppy. Oh, uh, man, you name it, man. Brothers, people used to come through that gym. And and, and we all used to, Troy. Troy, you was in the gym. Every and day. I, I was like, hold on. I remember you came around with Marlon and I was like, yo, I know you. He's like, what do you, what do you mean? You know me. I was like, yo, we box at the same gym. He was like, oh yeah, that you the skinny kid. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> so yeah, man, I boxed for like four years. Um, and and it just took one fight for me to realize that I wasn't a competitive boxer. Um, I don't know if they mixed the card. We went to Pittsburgh or somewhere. I don't remember, but I I know we went. Probably the Philly. It was Philly or, or Pittsburgh. I remember they mixed the card up. And I got hit with like an overhand right and a left hook. And it was like, I, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I don't, I don't I don't think I want anybody else hitting me because <laughs> my brothers never hit me in my face. They would beat me up to my body, but they never hit me in my face. So I got hit with that overhand right and that left hook. And I think that was that was the, uh, the end of my competitiveness in the ring. But. Um, working out and doing that, I, I, I definitely football, basketball was my was my uh, catalyst. That's where I took off at. Yeah, I always said you make. I always said you either make a uh, make a great receiver or you'll be a great dude, like a you know to grab some rebounds because your arms are all you know long enough to slap box with God. So yeah. Well, got yeah, I got a I got a six seven reach. My my wingspan is six seven. From fingertip to fingertip, it's definitely six foot seven. Um, I, I I prayed to get that tall, but it never it never happened. Um, but that's okay because I think my son, he is going to definitely take all of that height and do something with it. 
Um, you you brought up the fact that he plays basketball. He grew and grew and grew, and now he's playing with one of the um, top ranked fourth grade teams in the nation. Um, Slammer Jam Hoyas. I go ahead and throw it out there. These kids are so talented and and dedicated to what they do. Um, it's almost crazy because every situation I've had him in, he's been the best on the team. Um, he he got invited to come up to their camp and work out with those guys, and then he got it up there and saw that he wasn't the best on the team, and he, he kind of like kind of took a step back. But the work ethic is there. He actually just got finished. He dribbling the basketball just right now for two and a half hours downstairs in the basement, just pounding the ball. So, I mean, it's just those things like that that he's doing. It. I mean, I'm proud of the kid. Now, take us take us on a journey to all the cities that your talent took you to and countries and all that. Just all the time, all all the places you've been, man, since you since you got into the comedy and acting. And uh, tell us some of the TV shows that you've been on and we might know and all that. Got you, got you. So, um, while in while in Hawaii, um, not only did I uh, do comedy, I also had a chance to work with a couple of great big movie stars. One in saying Bruce Willis. He came over there with Tears of the Sun over in Hawaii and I was able to to get on set and be on set with Bruce Willis in Tears of the Sun. Um, I'm actually one of the natives running across the field. Um, we were going to ambush something and I was I was in that scene. And then um, I came back stateside um, once I got out and I had an opportunity to be on the wire. Um, not only was I on the wire, but I was in Disney Step Up 2. Um, then just, just still working with the same agent, um, Mecca and all stars, uh, all star entertainment. Uh, she put me in a bunch of B roll, uh, B films, films that went straight to DVD, never hit the theaters. Um, it was between us from within. Um, and I did a couple of, um, like stage plays right after that. I got into like a custom. Christian comedy uh, stage. It was a Christi Christian comedy musical that I did. Um, you just slip up and cut, did you? No, I didn't. But I was the comic relief of the play. I was. Everybody else was so serious. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> everybody else' role was so serious in the play that I had an opportunity to come in and be the the comic relief of that play. So it, it kind of worked out. So what was your role in the uh, Christian play? In what in which play? You said you had a Christian play that you were on? Yeah, it was, was a role. It was a, it was a Christian comedy musical. Um so I was the best friend to the lead. And the 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 lead, Tedrick Barnes, he didn't know if he wanted to marry a certain girl or not. So he started to date all these other girls to see if the girl that he wanted to marry was the one he was wanted to marry. And I was his best friend. We worked together, we, we hung out together, we did all of this stuff. And um, I was the one that was kinda there to, to break the ice on everything. So it was it was pretty cool, man. It was a pretty good play. I, that play was by a brother by the name of Antoine Harris. Yeah, yeah. Um, sound like your character, like character was, you know, his emotional tunic for. Yes, it was. It was it was it was me. I, I had a chance to really be me on stage, so it wasn't hard to get into that character. Um, there right. was a play that 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 kind of threw me for a loop. That that I um had some trouble with, but I had the opportunity to do that play several times. Shout out to um, Judge Greg Poole and his wife, Cheryl Poole, who wrote wrote the play, and Greg Poole was in it, and he also uh, directed the play. So um, that, that, that movie, that uh, stage play was called uh, 
the hero's tale and it's actually an award-winning stage play we do we did the um dc black theater festival for years and years and years and years in a row and um we actually won an award but that role i played by a, a name a brother by the name of suede and and suede was an inter interesting character um i related to him because he he was raised by his mom only so was i um he had brothers but this guy was the oldest of three brothers and he had to be the one to take care of his brothers because his mother had a drug problem and she was prostituting to take care of him and his brothers. You seem like he was very <laughs> layered. Oh my God, Onion. You don't know the Onion that, that this guy was. And not only, not only did he do all of that, but his mom doing those things, he, she was never around, drugging and drinking and, and, and prostituting. She was always on the go. So it left him to raise his brothers. And it put him in a realm of disliking black women. So I only like white women. And I was like, hmm, this is, this is, this is interesting because, right, <laughs> this is interesting because that's not me at all, right? So now, um, as, as I move forward in this, in this character, I'm starting to really find out what this guy's problem is. He doesn't like black women. So whenever he, his friends would be talking about black women or seeing black women, I would be right there dogging them. And wow. I, 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 I mean, it was, it was, it was crucial. Now here's the, here's the twist of it because I was they gonna were, ask you for the I was gonna ask you real quick. How'd you do your research for that, man? You got friends like that? I mean, we watch movies. How did you do the research for that? Thing? Well, I grew up. I grew up in Montgomery County, so I kind of saw. I kind of saw that I dated. I dated a few white girls before. Um, you were brave. So very. Um, but you know, I, I'm kind of shallow about that, and 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 I'm. I don't. It's just me. I, I went for the you know, I went for the white girls that look black, right? Not not necessarily act black, but they was built like they were black. You know what I mean? They had they had light skinned bodies, but their bodies were built like like sisters. You went after Kim Kardashian, pretty much. But you no, know, Kim, you know Kim was built. Kim's a builder bear. The, the, these girls were born like this. The, the ones that I dated. So long story short, um, I, I I just went back into those days where I did do, I, I dated white women and it it was it was it was it was it was okay. But 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 the twist and the hard part of it was that I did something to one of the white girls and I blamed it on my friends, sent them to jail for ten years. The whole time they was in jail, I felt guilty for it, so I took care of them. I sent them money. I put money on their books. I put. I sent them commissary. You know, I kind of felt bad about what I did. Right uh, now, let me, let me ask you: Is this is this play on DVD, or can you watch it, or can you stream it somewhere? You you probably can. It's called The Hero's Tale by Cheryl Poole. I think okay. there is okay. some DVDs out there of it. Um, it was filmed. I want to check it out now that you because the more you talk about it, the more I want to check it oh out. Oh my goodness, man! Play. When I say when I say when if, if when and if the production ever comes back up, um, I will be sure to let you know that it's out there. But it's 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 it takes place. It's it's one of those flashback movies, um, where well, stage plays. Let me not say movies because it actually can be a motion picture. Because it's, it's uh, it starts in the 60s and it, it and it's the 80s, 80, 60, 80, 60, 80, 60. Whenever they get to reminiscing and talking, it flash back to the 60s. So it's in the 80s and then it flash back 20 years. Right. Um, the, the 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 twist of it is, is that it was some some gray babe that I fallen in, in like with and I end up getting her pregnant. 
and she approaches me with having a baby, but I'm caught up at the time with raising my brothers. So I can't have no baby or no girl saying no baby. Some white boys was buying some weed from me at the time, right? So yeah, Terrence, I said, I yeah, Terrence, I want you to hold on a second because you're getting some questions in the in the chat room and stuff. So okay, uh, you, yeah, you got D Ray. You got uh, let me just shout out some of the people in there. You got D Ray Productions in there. Toby Bartlett, and Ram, Mr. Matt to you. But uh, D Ray Productions wants to know: Is this real life or the play sending the homie to the pen? <laughs> That's the play. I, I ain't never said none of my homies nowhere. <laughs> it's that's that's strictly the play. The play is called the Hero's Tale. <laughs> well, I can it's tell it. you what it sounds good if people ask you questions like that. Right, good. right, and, and you know what? And you know what? During the play, and this is what this is what really let me know that I was serious about what I was doing. Right. Um, at the end of one of the productions, we go out into the audience and we take pictures, we sign autographs, we do, you know what I mean? We do meet and greet, right, with the cast. And one particular show, every single person that walked past me was like, I hope she killed you. And I was like, damn, like, <laughs> I, I, I want to go home after this. I don't want to die. <laughs> and then it was only, it was only a play. But then my acting coach, shout out to Vera Katz, um, one of the prominent acting coaches out there. If anybody is involved in anything and know about Howard University's uh, arts and performing arts department, you got to know who Vera Katz is. Everybody that's come through here or out of there has come through Vera Katz, including uh, Felicia Rashad, who just took over as the president up there of the um that's actually uh, big. No That's doubt. Vera Katz is, and when she said, when she said to me, because I, I kind of, it kind of hurt my feelings when, when they was like, damn, I hope you would have died. Everybody that came through me was like, man, you got what you deserve. And, and she was like, you should be happy at this moment. And I'm like, why? She said, because you made them believe in that character. And I was like, oh, damn, I did. So, um, <laughs> The, the the guy Sway was 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 a horrible guy. Not only did he send them kids to the to, to jail, the girl that he got pregnant, he pawned them off to the white boys who was coming to him just to buy weed. And they had one of the boys who who, who was a virgin, and they was like, "Oh, we're gonna get you laid tonight." And when I found that out, I was like, "Oh, not a problem." I drugged the girl up that tells me that she she's pregnant by me, and I'm like, "Whatever." He ain't gonna mess with me. So yeah. I wrote her. Look, I sold her. I sold them the weed and sold them the bride. No, no, and I'm uh, saying, did I write this play? That look, you're, like terrible. Me. you're terrible, dude. <laughs> so, but this is actually based on a true story, though. Um, it takes place at um, it takes place at Dupont Circle. It was a group of friends, four friends. It was uh, Feats, Black Jimmy, Suede, and what was my other buddy name? That's the one that got cracked in the head with a bat. Oh, man. It was a great play, though. Great play. Great, great play. I got a question for you. How many plays have you written Let's on your go. own and just went out, you know, went out and did them, man? Because I know you're a playwright also, so, yeah. Right. So, my, my, I've, I've written four. Four stage plays. Um, only one has gone up into production. Um, I'm, I, I got some stage plays that I'm trying to work on. Um, a screenplays that I'm that I'm trying to work on that I want to come out super soon. Um, I'm just looking for a, a production team and a great budget that's going to allow me to. Uh, that's going to allow me to 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 do what I do. Keep on speaking in the truth, you know. Come make yourself. Oh, I, 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 it's 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 timing. It's timing, and I don't yeah. think you know. I don't think it was time for me to 
to have any of that stuff done. I, and 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 anything that I do, I, I I definitely keep it and I hold it close because I know that in due time things will happen. I didn't think I was gonna get back on the comedy stage, and Why is that? and it, it's Why? Uh, say say that again. Why is that? Because when I pulled away from comedy because of my son and I knew I wanted to be just a, a great father to him, I was like, that's it. This I'm just going to be with my boy. I, I'm good. I've done enough. But then uh, opportunity presented itself um, for me to reopen and host a room. And once I did that, the bug, man, once you get on stage and you get that bug, you make people laugh. And 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 you feel good about making the people laugh. You don't want to stop that. Dick Gregory told me he was like Terrence. You know what? This is the only profession in the world that we cannot retire from. You can never get too old. You can never get too old to talk. He said, "Hell, you, he said he said hell. They call it stand up comedy. I don't stand up." And you know, Dick Gregory's last 10 years in comedy, he sat down on stage. Paul Mooney's last 10 years in comedy, he sat down on stage. If you ever seen him uh, perform, Dick Gregory sits down. Yeah, he's, he was a monster. Man, let uh, me tell you something. That guy was had so much like information yeah, about yes, everything yes, because yes. every single body when I say yes, every single body, every single body in, and a lot of his, his in the limelight, in the yeah, limelight, no matter was if he's on the reality, political side. It had you, had you thinking about a lot of stuff like, Man, like you know, I remember something. him telling a joke, which was very real, but you got you to gotta mute your mic because I'm hearing the echo again, uh, Terrence. Yeah, you know, I remember him telling a joke where he was like, um, he was like, you know, uh, I think it was a white woman that... No, 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 you know, it was a white man that ran into a crowd and shot it up. Oh, yes, yes, you know, mental illness. Let her, and then he, then he turned around, and, and these are his words. These are his words. It's not Troy Grant's words. He said, okay, nigga, you go try that. <laughs> You'd be dead before the first person hit the, hit the ground, he said, right? All of that's true, though, isn't it? That's all true. All true. All true. Um, man, Dick Gregory, a anybody that was in the limelight, no matter what stage it was on, it, it, they consulted this man. He was like the Dalai Lama of human beings. I think the yeah, Dalai yeah. Lama even consulted with him. I, I wouldn't put it past him. Like, he, he was like, OK, OK. Let me tell you now. So you want to, you know, he had that he had that authoritative voice. He's like. Huh? Okay. Uh, the the okay. biggest thing I picked up from from Dick Gregory is how he said, "Huh?" After everything he said, "Huh? Huh?" Oh my goodness! Um, I had the opportunity to present him with his 80th birthday cake. Um, he he and my son share the same birthday, October 8th, right? I remember being in the hospital the day my son was born. And I got the call from 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 John X. He was like, uh, you're coming to work tonight, right? I was like, John, you know, I just had my son. He was like, Terrence, we got a big night tonight. We got our showroom held 304 people at max capacity. It was 670 tickets sold <laughs> for one show. <laughs> we had people in the lobby going up the steps. Upstairs, we had all of the TVs on clo on um closed circuit, so we had every TV show in the showroom downstairs. It was so many people wanting to see Dick Gregory, and I had the opportunity to literally present this man with his 80th birthday cake, and it was so amazing. It was it was it, it was so his his family is so talented, so smart. You know, his son's a doctor. His daughter is a renowned uh, uh, singer. Um, you name it, man. He 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 just lived a really good life, and he definitely bestowed a lot of wisdom and helped me out in, in comedy. So, 
I can't he also he also jumped a lot of stuff off too, like uh, you know, Homie the Clown, which you uh, which you know about, you know, Dave Chappelle, he did some writing on there. Uh, so you know, he did a lot of great, man. I just uh, yeah, I just appreciated Paul, that he Paul was so Mooney cool. also, Paul Mooney also. Um, yeah, yeah, wrote, that's what I'm talking about. Now, now, listen, you know, I got a big grocery story, but you got to go on mute for me real quick. I used to work at BWI Airport at uh, some car rental place. I saw this fast walking brother, this older brother, and I'm like, "Wow, that's Dick Gregory." I don't usually chase people. I'm not. A, I'm not one of the people that chase stars, right? But this dude was like a legend to me based on a lot of things he did. So I'm in my 30s at this point, and this dude is walking so fast, and he's so far ahead of me. I had to jog. By the time I got there, I was like, "Hi, doing, brother Gregory." How you doing? Uh, you know, I'm a big fan of yours. My name is Troy. Let me sign his paperwork. So I must have sounded like I said Floyd. It's like, take care, brother Floyd, and please lose some weight. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> that's what he wrote on the paper, brother. No, that's that's hilarious. Oh man, uh, Dick Gregory it was was that he was that kind of he was that kind of person when it when it came to humor. He 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 definitely no cut cards. He he told it how it was. Um, and it's truth, man. The truth that he spoke. If he knew it, he was speaking it. You couldn't if you didn't want nobody else to know. Don't tell Dick Gregory because he 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 was he was putting it out there. He told. Everything about Whitney Houston when she died, Michael Jackson when he died, um, from Prince when he died. He told he just told the truth about it, and it was crazy because as we sat and talked about it, literally it would come out. Everything he said would they would they would then say it on the news, or it'll come out on the radio. Or it, it, people would just start talking about it. And I was like, how in the hell did he know that? I think that shit was in California. I, I don't know if you left D.C. But ain't no telling, man. That's That was that was Dick Gregory. R.I.P. to one of the greats, man. Troy, did you take off on me? No, 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 brother. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. So, where else you want to go with this? Uh honestly, I gotta. Well, we about thirty. We about forty-two minutes in. So, I know how talented you are. So, you know, this is what I'm gonna do. You got it. Got go on mute real quick for me. This is what I'm gonna do, right? I'm gonna set up a joke for you, kind of like you know a Jeopardy style. So, I'm gonna give you the answer to the question, and you just gotta come up with the punchline. All right. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right. So the quest. All right. So the uh. So you know the whole scenario is that you know you were you you were headed home from one of your shows. It's like it's like one a.m. You know, and it's uh, and this one car came behind you, tapped you and stuff, and you went out to look to see if your car was damaged, and uh, you know these four brothers jumped out and jacked you for your car, right? But you knew this one brother who had all the information and he was trying to get your car back. So you go into the brother's club and you ask him, you ask him a simple question. You say to him, you say to him that you're here to get your car back and can he help you? And then he says to you, he says to you, you know, I only give information if my belly is full and my balls are empty. And your reply is. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> you ain't gonna get the information. <laughs> nah, I'm good. Yeah, I, yeah. Next, I'm on to the next. On to the next uh, clue, nigga. <laughs> if my belly is full <laughs> and my balls are empty, right? Uh, fuck, you want me to do? <laughs> I can't help you with none of that, nigga. I ain't got no food or no girl. Like, what am I do for you? I can't do nothing for you. <laughs> Looking for some information, and he talking about is my balls are 
empty and my stomach is full. What is, nigga, you looking for a, 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 a late night brothel with a smorgasbord? I don't know. <laughs> That's some, hey, hey, Troy, your imagination is off, brother. <laughs> I gotta get my. You know, I gotta get me forty years. You, 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 I gotta. I gotta get. I, but, but but listen, listen to the indecent proposal. Is this what? What in all the indecent proposals is this? I get carjacked, and and then I get what? I get an indecent proposal and carjacked in the same night. In that the same right, damn bro. night. Southeast yeah. DC is rough, baby. Southeast DC is rough. Yeah, what did I what did I do to deserve this shit? <laughs> I'm stuck. What would you do, Troy? What I do? I would say, well, you know, I got a sandwich in my back pocket. <laughs> I got a sandwich in my back pocket. And uh and uh, you know, I don't think you want to and I got a donkey in my drawer, so it's either gonna be the sandwich or the donkey. You know which one? <laughs> okay. Um, that's like Mike Tyson the other day said he wanted to fuck Sugar Ray Leonard. I was like, hey, hey, hey. He <laughs> didn't say it like that. But no, I got that's, exactly, that's exactly what he said. He wanted to fuck him. He was like, uh, I'm going to let you beat him up and then I'm going to fuck him. I was like, uh, Mike, you, you didn't you didn't see that interview? When, 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 uh, <laughs> with, with, with Tommy Hearns. Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard was was going toe to toe, and and they was on Mike Mike Tyson's podcast, and then Sugar Ray Leonard was like, "Man, you better sit your ass down, Tommy, before I fuck you up. I will whip your ass." And then Mike was like, "Tommy, I know you're not gonna let him talk to you like that. He's too pretty to talk like that." And then Sugar Ray Leonard said it again. He was like, "Damn." Mike was like, "Damn, Tom, Tommy, look at him. He's still pretty." All these damn years, all them punching to the face, and he's still pretty. He said, Tommy, I tell you what, you beat him up, and I'm going to fuck him. I was like, damn, I can fuck him. What, what is going on? What in, what in the hell? I was like, this shit he is. That's go. like, this, like, this, but real quick, that's like when when he had fat, uh, when, you know, he was on the Fat Joe uh, podcast, and uh, Fat Joe was, you know, was reminding him that uh, Fat Joe came to his house. What do you know? Uh, What's the girl name? You know, uh, Remy Ma, right? Remy Ma, yeah. And Mike Tyson came to the door, butt ass naked. He said, with nothing on, and he was like, "Mike, we ain't playing them type of games today, <laughs> Mike. <laughs> and then, we ain't playing them type of games. You gotta, you gotta go put some clothes on, bro." And he and he looked at him. He's like, "Look, this ain't for you. This for her. I'm trying to show her what I'm working with." Right? <laughs> Damn, Mike. Mike, Mike, Mike is Mike. Mike is a Mike is a he's a wild individual. You free spirit. You free been, spirit. He been he been wild for a long time though. He been like that for a very long time. And so, all right, let's get back to the <laughs> back to Terry Hawkins, man. No what is the future have you been with all this talent, man? Say that again. What is the future have you going with all this talent? Opening my own comedy club within the next two or three years. Um, Where at it, DT? Wherever I can get it, man. I'm not. I'm not picky. I'm. 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 I'm working with some investors right now. I got. I got some people that's behind me, and got some Guyanese uh, brothers and sisters that got behind me. <laughs> they actually gave me their whole uh, bar and lounge area, and it's being transformed as we speak into a comedy club. So that's going to be the the stepping stone and I'm going to get that up and running for them. And then I'm off on my own, building my own. And then and just trying to get, trying to get one of my screenplays published. Now, you know, are you going to be doing any lives with any of these comedies you do like coming on live and doing live shows on YouTube or streaming or whatever? Um, I, I'm not going to be doing too much streaming. Um, but I am going to every Friday now for the next couple of weeks, I'm going to be doing open mics um, at the spot. And then after that, it's going to be straight comedy shows from there. 
and I'm I'm bringing in all of my friends, all of my comedy friends. Um, I got them from here to California. So I got some friends that has moved from DC to California that I'm gonna be bringing back out here. And then I got a lot of the people you already been seeing on TV and everywhere else. They're also coming. You go ahead and name drop. Nah, I'm good. Go ahead, man. I ain't got a name drop, but I just say stay tuned. Um, right now I got Joe Claire getting ready to come back and uh do some more work with me. Um, Lawrence Owens, uh, you name it, man. I, I got I got Tony Tony Woods, um, Kevin Anthony, uh, Sylvia Traymore is gonna be in there. Uh, got a lot of a lot of good friends. My friend Tony Spoon, Jamon Donnell. Uh, I got my man Zoda, a uh, comedian. I got a bunch of people, man. Bunch of people. What you say, Troy? You on mute, brother? You on mute? You on mute? Take this. What, okay. What, what'd you say? I said I'm a big fan of Tony Woods. Oh yeah, that's a good friend of mine. Tony Woods uh yeah. was down at the Ride Act. Um we we he's a lot older than me. But yeah, yeah. was he 50? 50? Nah, I'm 50. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. We are 50. We are 50. Wait, Damn. Wait. I'll be I'll be 49 in July. No, Tony's in his 60s. He's almost 60. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Tony. If if Tony is not, he's yeah, he's sixty something. He's like sixty one, sixty two. Um, okay. Th those okay. are legends, though. And and, and the crazy yeah. part is, uh, seventeen years ago, when when I first like like came back around and started doing comedy here in D.C., um, I would be around these guys. But these were guys yeah. that I have seen on Comic View, Deaf Comedy Jam. Uh, Comedy Central, you know, these are people that I watched on television along with millions and millions and millions of other people, but I have the privy of being from the exact same city they are. Um, right, right. Uh, and, so and I just be have you ever worked with Teddy? Teddy Carpenter? Yes, I, I, yes, I have. Um, Teddy, yes, Teddy sir. Carpenter, Teddy Carpenter is a, is a, is a different kind of human being. Mm -hmm. he, he 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 has one of those spirits that you you like you you either gonna let him be rude as hell or you gonna check him right and I'll tell you a funny story mm -hmm. that, that happened with that um Mike Brooks had a room in d c somewhere and um we were out there. And I was I was fairly new to this to this area with doing mm -hmm. comedy. And I seen Teddy Carpenter outside after I did my set or whatever. And I like I did all of the comedians that I've seen on TV. I would approach him, Mr. or Mrs. I was like, hey, Mr. Carpenter, how you doing? I'm Terrence the comedian. I'm a young comedian in the game. I understand you have a room on a Tuesday night up in Martinis. And I just want to know, can I? get some of your stage time. And he was like, he just looked at me like, whatever. And I'm like, damn, that's how you treat people when you first meet them? Like, I said, Mr. Carpenter, nigga, like, I could have said, you know what I mean? I could have just called you by your name, hey, Teddy. Like, like we like we old drinking buddies. But nah, I, I gave you the respect that I thought you would do. And then he was like, yeah, young nigga, you can come up there. He said, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't really need y'all up there. I could do the whole two hours by myself. I don't that 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 that. And I'm like, whoa. Like yeah, what yeah, like, yeah. like what was that for? So I go up there on a Tuesday night. I I, I get mm -hmm. ready to go on stage and he approaches me. He goes, Yeah, I'm gonna give you five minutes. Look, I don't believe in the light system. Bye -bye. And if anybody knows about comedy and how it works. When you get on stage, they give you the light when you got two minutes. So you need to start wrapping up your last joke and get off stage. So before I get on stage, he hit me with, 
yo, yeah, man, I'm, I don't believe in that light shit. So what I'm going to do is I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to let you go ahead up there and do your thing. And then when you do, do your five minutes, you just go ahead and get off the stage. So uh-huh. I'm, I'm very, I'm very, That's very true. animated and, and, and I'm into it. Like when I'm, when I'm rocking and I feel a groove, mm-hmm. ain't, no, ain't no stopping me. So I get mm-hmm. on stage and I talk about, I talk, I'm talking about my brothers this night mm. and, and I'm, I'm, I'm rocking. The crowd is, 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 you know how black people laugh. They standing up, running around, falling out their chairs. They doing this. And I'm only like two minutes in. I look towards the back of the room and I get a light and I'm like, ignore the light because he said he don't believe in the light system. So I'm going to go. I go on. I do another joke. It's hitting. I do another joke. It's hitting. I do another joke. It's hitting. I see another light. I'm like, what in the hell's going on? So out of nowhere, the DJ does a little scratch. Then I come up, you know, I'm 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 Johnny on the spot. I call him DJ What the Fuck. I said, y'all give it up for DJ What the Fuck. He back there doing whatever the fuck he want to do. Bam, hit another one. They like, oh, shit. That's so cool. now I get another light. And I'm like, this joker said he doesn't believe in the light. So fuck it. Now the DJ done played a whole song. So I'm like, man, what the fuck are you still doing back there? Like, pause the button. So he goes, nah, man, it's your turn to get off stage. And then I look, Teddy Carpenter is walking directly towards me. And I'm like, what in the hell? So I try to hand him the mic. I was like, all right, man, y'all, thank y'all for laughing and listening. My name is Terrence Comedian. Y'all have a good night. That's how I always close my shit. Y'all have a good night. So I go to hand him the mic. He goes, man, put the mic back in the, in the cradle. And I'm like, whoa, this joker has a serious problem. Now, from the stage to the back of the room where my book bag was, Every person that I walked past was like, man, you got a car, you got a contact information, man, you were funny, da 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 all the way back to the back of the room. I get to the back of the room, Teddy Carpenter the whole time is just going, these young niggas think they funny and da 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 That's what we're supposed to be doing. We're comedians, bro. So I was like, man, I'm never doing anything with this joker again. Here's where the funny part comes in, because now I'm at the ride act. And I got a nice position at the ride at. Before you could talk to the big man, you had to come talk to me. That's Carmen. Who comes down the steps other than Teddy Carpenter with his just with this humble look on his face? Like, hey man, how you been? I'm like, better than you. What's up? <laughs> like, what's up? You ain't been on stage in a grip. Like, don't, like, what do you want? And he literally was like, man, is John, is John X around? And I'm like, yeah, give me your contact information. I'll see if you, I, I, I get it to him. That's karma, <laughs> baby. That's karma. And out of nowhere, man, it was, it was one of them situations. But, you know, I wish the brother all the luck in, in, in the world, uh, the, the best in the world. I don't have, I don't, I don't carry any grudges. Um, in fact, in fact, I'm going to employ him. I'm going to employ him and invite him out to the club to get him back on stage, you know, because he he had a heartfelt confession where, you know, he, he hit rock bottom. Uh, he, 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 had, he, he was on drugs. He was having problems with with some kids, moms and, you know, just going through life. You know, life has a way of kicking you in your butt when you don't really. uh when you're not humble, when you don't show humility, so it, it was a it was it was a serious wake up call for him. So, like I said, I'm I'm I don't hold any grudges. I'm gonna be in a in a, in a position to employ. So I will I will definitely give him a weekend at the spot, and that's 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 that's, that's real talk. Because I I appreciated Teddy Carpenter. I appreciated seeing him on. Uh, seeing him on Def Comedy Jam and bringing back a prominent time in comedy when it was all forgotten. He brought back vaudeville. 
he did a joke with Big Les, and I'm I don't I don't know if you guys remember this, where he had Big Les behind him being his hands as he talked and told the story. That was a brilliant joke. That was, was brilliant. But that was that wasn't his joke. He didn't write that. No. No. See, you got to do your you got to do your you got to do your studying as a, 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 before you get on a, a, a comedy stage. You got to do your your research and your studying of whose jokes is whose, because jokes to comedians is like drugs to drug dealers. That's our commodity. We get paid for what we say. You know what I mean? So if you still and taking my jokes and you're going to, I'm I'm staying local because of my my living situation, my family. So I don't want to travel and do things. I'm just doing local shows. You come here from New York, but on your way back to New York, you're going to stop in Delaware, Philly, New Jersey, and then you're going to be back in New York. So you're going to do three or four clubs on your way back, right? But you done took one of my jokes. You done took two or three of my jokes because you're like, damn, this kid's clever. But he ain't mm -hmm. traveling. He ain't going nowhere. He not doing this. So now <clears throat> they done took your jokes to Delaware, Philly, New Jersey, and back up to New York. So you're like, damn, I don't want to get there before I get there. And then they mess around. Somebody see you and then they bring you up there and you tell your joke, which somebody would have named and already took and told. And you, like, sound like you're you, somebody's joke. You, you sound like you're stealing your Absolutely. own joke. Absolutely. Absolutely. So there's an unwritten, there's an unwritten rule in comedy that, 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 that states whoever gets to the TV first can claim it. You sound like a bootlegger. You sound that's like a joke bootlegger. Yeah. But that's what it is, though. That's what it is. A lot of people see somebody on a movie because they have a name doing certain mm -hmm. jokes, doing certain things, and they're like, oh, shit, that's hilarious. But a million people seen that. When you're local and you're in a club, only the 125, 75, 50, 30 people that's in that spot sees you. But if 30 million yeah. sees them, 30 million beats 30 people. So yeah, the 30 million. Yeah. And then you just go and tell. That I hear a lot of, right? Oh, uh, it's, 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 real quick for me, and I, I'll go ahead and say the joke. Uh, it's a joke where I heard it. Well, uh, the first person I heard say it was uh, Dale Hughley. He's talking about gay people. He said, you know, y'all can't. He said, you know, y'all can take a dick, but you can't take a joke. Then I heard. George, George, uh, you know, Lopez say the same thing. So it was like, I don't know whose joke that is, but I keep hearing it a lot. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but I'll go ahead and divulge some of our uh, secrets. The structure of a joke is premise, setup, punchline. Right? You can have the same premise, the same subject matter, but your setup is different. Your punchline should be different. Every, your setup and your punchline should be different. The premise can be the same, but if they tell it word for word verbatim, then there's a problem. They don't even remix it. See, they got this thing called remixing a joke. Right. Where, 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 where they won't tell the joke, but they'll just tell the punchline. Um, it's a joke out there right now that that's mine that people remixed it and 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 took it. Um, I call body magic. Remember the body magics that came out? They came out for men and women, and and they would say you can go from a size twelve to a size four in a matter of minutes. That was their advertisement, and it was mm -hmm. a thing that they would suck. People put on and suck themselves in and make themselves really, really small. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so I said they 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 put the wrong name on it. They shouldn't call it body magic. They should call it tricking it. And it's a whole joke that goes with that. And I got I got some some kids in Baltimore that 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 will tell that joke. She'll, she'll, it's a female that'll come out on stage and say, "I got on my tricking nigga tonight. I hope I get to trick one of you niggas." And I'm like, bitch. Did you just remix my joke? And I done caught her a few times. I done, I done been in the spot with her a few times where she done said it. 
and it's it's terrible. But Mark Pr- Mark Prince told me one time, good brother, real good brother, gave me a lot of good comedy advice. He told me one time, he was like, Terrence, you can't be angry with people that's taken from you because they only take what they know is clever. So if they if they think it's clever and they can punch it up, they're going to take it. But you have to you can do one of two things. You can take one of theirs in front of them. And when they confront you about it, you just say, hey, if you keep your hand out of my pocket, I'll keep my hand out of yours. Or you can write faster than they steal. And you continue to write and you continue to be funny and you continue to be this witty person that people want to take from. Now you become a ghostwriter. So they're going to be coming for They're going to be coming to you for these witty things. And now they have to pay you. Yes, sir. Now they have to pay you. So you don't have to be on the stage to get paid. And I was like, damn, Mark, thank you. I need to start you doing that again. You stay dropping gems and jewels, brother. I appreciate you. Shout out to Mark Prince. He just celebrated a birthday, too. Um, yeah, now, did, did you notice this real quick? Look, did you notice this? Did you notice it there? No. You know what, that what are you doing? That was me adding on your joke because I was giving you the like, boy. No. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the like that they give you, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell was that? It's normally it's I'm normally joking. a red light. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a budget, baby. I'm on a budget. I'm on a budget. Oh shit, that's more than a budget. <laughs> <laughs> shit. Yeah, but look, you know, before we close up, man, I want to thank you for coming out, giving your time. You uh, you have a you have a website. You got a you got somewhere where they where the people could reach you and all that and book you or anything like that. You can you can go ahead and get out your social media. You can always catch me on my social media at Terry D A Comedian. I'm on Twitter. On um Instagram is the Duke of Comedy. And on Facebook is Terrence Hawkins. T E R R A N C E. Right now I got a picture of my military, my military uh pictures up there because I still haven't taken it down from uh Veterans Day. Um, shout out to not having yeah, enough yeah. money to have a personal uh, a personal assistant. Yeah. I, I do that myself. Um, Why well, everybody looks darker? In their, it, I got a question. Why everybody looks darker? You know, in their military pictures. Because um, yeah. United States Marine Corps boot camp is in one or two places. That's it. Mm-hmm. Just two uh-huh. places. That's it. You either go to San Diego, hot as fuck. Or you go to South Car- Buford, South Carolina, Paris Island, hot as fuck. Um, you have 108 degree days and you are out there drilling and moving and shaking and doing all of that stuff. So the only thing you have on is a cover. And it like from here up is light. But from here, all of this is dark. You, you know, they make you yeah. shave everything off your face. They got your, your sleeves rolled up. So from here, from here up, you're light. From here down, you're dark. So you're out there in the sun, just baking. So everybody, everybody coming out of boot camp is tanned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you entered the Marine like you know, uh, like you know, a Cuba Gooding Jr., but you came back Bernie Mac. Yes, sir. I agree. That yeah, I agree. Because yeah. the Marine Corps did it to me, but I tell you what. One of the best experiences I've ever had in my life. One of the I know, best. Man. It it, it changed my life. I accepted the I accepted the challenge of the change when I left, and I knew I knew going down there with that mentality, it wasn't gonna make me wasn't gonna allow me to quit. But we started no. with eighty seven recruits. We graduated forty. You gotta 47. be hey, you gotta have some backbone to finish, man. 47 people that was in my platoon alone was like, nah. That's why if you ever really pay attention to the Marine Corps slogan, people always say it's uh, uh, simplified Dallas, it's uh, once a Marine, always Marine. Ain't none of that our slogan. 
Our slogan, if you pay attention, is the few, the proud, the Marines. Because everybody don't make it. Everybody can't go. It takes a, a certain a special individual to become a United States Marine. And I accepted the challenge of the change, the change of the challenge. And I, I, I that made me that made me fight all the way through. Granted, for the first two weeks <laughs> on on that island, I cried myself to sleep every single night. Sobbing mm -hmm. tears cried because it was it was it was a serious reality check. I tell you, I tell you what, man. Go, go ahead and tell them. Go, go ahead and give them your, you know, your uh, social media again, man. And I'll put it out. I'll put it out the next uh, uh, next time I replay the show, and I'll put it out on the next show that I do. All right. So go ahead and give okay, me. Okay, I appreciate media. that. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's Terry T E R R Y D A comedian on Twitter. It's the Duke of Comedy, all lowercase, all one word on Instagram, and then just Terrence Hawkins on Facebook. Um, if you go tonight to uh, any of those, you'll see, except for on Twitter, but on on Instagram and on uh, Facebook, you'll see my military pictures up there. All right, me and the Marine Corps, you'll see me, my Marine Corps boot camp pictures is up there. But I, I'm going to probably get them down tonight. Well, honestly, you see his eyes. That's Don't about it. You see eyes and a uniform. That's it. Just put a light on it. You can see my face. <laughs> I would. Thank you for thank you for your time, man. Definitely appreciate it, man. Thank you for coming. Oh, through. And like I always say, man, I'm always proud of you because you took the you took the courage to walk in the path of your dream, man. Appreciate that, brother. Yeah. I love it. I love yeah. the support and the encouragement, man. Y'all stay supporting uh, live arts, man. Definitely, definitely, and we, we got to get together and do a play for real because we got my mind. Let's go, man. Let's go. Character. Let's go. I, I think I think we can write a good a good boxing one about a kid Maybe coming up. To be boxing. I got a whole lot. I got a whole lot of things popping around in here. You just have to. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I heard. I just I just heard so all over the place. Huh? I just heard you getting carjacked and indecent proposed in one night. Like how much? <laughs> What a day have I what kind of day have I had to deserve this shit? Like what did I do? You take hey. my car, now you trying to take my man vagina? I'm good. Man, I'm good. Hilarious. <laughs> well, all right, man. I tell you what. I tell you what. <laughs> I'm gonna tell the story and you can verify that you can say you can say it's garbage. When we were coming up, you know, we all we all had a close our families were close. So you know, you would eat at my auntie house, I'll come to your mom's house and eat, right? Mm -hmm. And she was a, she was a great cook, and you would always get heated because you were like, "You always come over here and eat. That's all you do." <laughs> so you got your you on mute. You on mute. Like you every take, time, you, every time you came over there, you was eating. I'm like, "Damn, hi Troy." You don't even want to skip. <laughs> just what your mom cook? Really? Hi. Yeah. <laughs> How you no, doing? It was, one, it was this one time where she where she had the fried chicken, boy. Mm. She had the fried chicken and everything, and she put it out. And she had everything else there, that and you were bread. mad. Yeah, you 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 made sure you were like you ain't getting none of this chicken. You licked your hands and wiped it on all that chicken, and it was just a <laughs> wing. And, and then she brought out the breast, and I and I kindly took some bounty and wrapped that sucker up. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Oh, you are out of control. And I Tim was mad at you, boy. Timmy was mad at you, brother. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you a quick story about Tim before we go. He's been an asshole yeah. my whole life. He's older than me, so my whole life he's been an asshole. I don't know about the years prior to me being born, but when I was since I've been born, asshole. So we were getting ready to go to church one morning, and we had this, this pact between the three brothers. And it was literally, I'm the youngest, so I always got like the short end of the stick, the short, short end of the stick. Um, the day before I got Tracy for his bacon, right? So he got up and went to the bathroom and didn't say, hey, watch my plate or don't touch that. You had to say something. I don't remember what we had to say, but you had to say something to let us know that you was going to eat what you was going to eat when you came back. So I ate Tracy's bacon and got away with it. So he... 
I had made me a sandwich, like an egg salad sandwich before we was getting ready to go to church. And I was going to go to the bathroom before we left. So I told this dumb, nim, this Nimrod, I said, bro, can you watch my sandwich? I went upstairs, used the bathroom, came back. This nigga gave me a wet paper towel with my sandwich. I was like, what the, what is this? And I was hungry, like hungry, hungry. He was like, oh, I thought you told me to wash your sandwich. The asshole. He did not was, say that. He did not say that. He did not say that, man. Come on. You can't do that to my boy. He did not. The asshole. The asshole of the family. Yeah. Him. Oh, my God. This asshole. Hey, hey, but let me, let me shout out the chat, man, because I see, you know, Major Key popped in here. So, you know, I dropped the link. If what up, still bro? Here, pop up before, before we close what down. Up, but let me. Let me shout out everybody that gave us their time. We got uh, we got D-Ray Productions, big up. Uh, I think I met him, you know, on the Mark Nash show. So, yeah, mm. so big up to him and big up to Mark Nash. Tony T uh, Tony, Bart Tony Bartlett, big up to him. I met him on Myron's show, Boxing Logics United. Myron's the one that came on when you had, you know, um, Roger Leonard and, uh, and, and, you know, and Brother and on. Bunch uh, Bay. And, and Bunch Bay on there. And he yeah. was like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so and so is my mother, right? <laughs> Remember he was telling that. Story? Right, like, like you did it to my mom, yo. Like, really, bro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and Ram is on here, <laughs> and Ram. I, I met her from a cooking show called Yardy Belly. Mister Matt to you. Uh, I don't, not sure how I know this brother, but I'm glad he's here and I appreciate his time. And I got K K Swab again. He's I actually met him on the Mark Nash show, which comes on, I think, 10, 10 11 o'clock. So go, go ahead and support Mark Nash. And I got Thomas Jones. Big up to him. He's always, always supporting me. I'm going to see if I get this brother's name right. got a smooth name. It's uh, Pusor Central, right? I probably messed that up. but he, that's, you'll, uh, that's you'll never see that shit on a keychain. <laughs> Here come your boy, man. There you go. There you go. Yo, what up, man? <laughs> What's going on? What's going on, brother? How you doing? Maintain it, man. Thanks for stopping in. Well, of course, man. Of course, man. I, I mean, I've, I've been a little busy trying to get some money, but I seen Troy Graham went live. And, bro, I didn't even <laughs> I know you was there, man. I just saw what you put in the chat, man. <laughs> what, 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 what did I say? Because I say a lot of shit. I got <laughs> jokes for the kids, bro. Yeah, you said Troy looked like the type of dude that gets to, you know, a reasonable... Uh, uh, what the hell is this word? Go ahead oh and yeah, 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 because 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 he said he said that that uh that that you were stealing food from the auntie house. You know what I'm saying? So I mean, you do look like the type of dude to to you know to have that that rags and shit. You know that then when you get pulled over, you try to like not give your ID to get arrested because they already know that you stole the food. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. And the food. They look at your face and they're like, "Yo, this is a guilty motherfucker right here. You going to jail?" You know what I'm saying? That is hilarious. <laughs> That, that is hilarious because he always like he wouldn't even say what's up when he walked in. He's always like, "Yo, what your mom cook for real? What's up? <laughs> what's up, Troy? How you? Did you go Yo, to school today? And you know, it, it takes it takes one to know one because I used to go to my best friend's house. They used mm -hmm. to serve me dinner, and then I used to go to my aunt's house. She used to serve me dinner, but I was the older cousin, so I didn't have like a cousin like you that used to check me. You see what I'm saying? I wow. had that, like, like the youngins. You know, they were just happy I was there. You know, all oh, my older cousins over here, they didn't know I was like, like you know, you know, sticking my hands in their fridge and, you know, trying to steal their snacks and shit like that. And, mm. and then I went to my own house where I didn't have no snacks. And I just had to eat whatever the fuck my mother cooked. You know what I mean? Oh, come cool. on, man. That, you know let, let me tell you something. See, <laughs> it wasn't often that we had food. It was just Troy would show up when we did. Right? <laughs> 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 it's been plenty of nights where I had goddamn sleep for dinner. Then we finally get some food and here come Troy ass. I'm like, you nigga, how lie, you, you know you just left my <laughs> How you gonna lie? Because you know you just drove from my Auntie Pauline house. I had some curry chicken or something. You lied. <laughs> hey, hey, go ahead, man. I'm just saying. You know how many nights I had, had, had that, he, he had the he had the tea. He had the tea in the in the in, in the light inside of the fridge, so it would light up in the sky like the Batman symbol. And yes. that motherfucker knew there was food there. Yeah. Yeah, I can see that shit. <laughs> Yes. Oh man, that's hilarious. <laughs> hey man. Um, 
I tell you what, you know, one of the best shows we did over there at uh, Major Key was you and William Joffe when uh, Joffe asked, oh boy, you know, where you well, from? Where you He's from? like, well, right. I, yeah, I'm from, I'm from some, some place near the water, near an island. Uh. <laughs> this, this asshole here, like, what the hell kind of ass is that? Won't you just say you're from the Great Lakes, you idiot? Like he he could have he could have said a thousand other things instead of that dumbass description. Like, what are you on a campsite? <laughs> what are you what are you, what are you doing over here? Your mom is never asked this. down by the river. Right. <laughs> you know right. What like, what is wrong with this guy? It ain't that much smoking weed in the world. Nah, it it, it was all fun, but Major Key is the one. That sparked it off. He said, "That is the most Vegas shit I have ever." Heard. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's why we went in on him. We went in on him right. because of that. Because he said the Vegas shit, bro. And I'm like, bro, we, uh, we're having interviews right now. We got a lot of people, entertainers and, and boxers and shit. Like, are you gonna come out with some random shit like that? Like, like you don't trust them? They're trusting you to give them a question. You know what I mean? And, right. and you can't even trust them to tell them where you where you from. Like, good lord, man. Yeah, this guy. And, and, you know, Terry could have left it alone, but no. Uh, mm -hmm. I have to throw no, it the fire, not right? me. No, don't you open the door with me? I don't just put my foot in it. <laughs> I'm coming through that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. but oh. let me close it. Let me close it down, now, my man. I got to get back to what I was. But man, I'm definitely appreciate your time and thank you for coming out. And we, by all means, let me man. know when you're performing again because I know you used to do your thing in Crofton and where. And well, yeah, I, I, I started that? producing shows. I started producing my own shows, and that was just me wanting to get on stage, though. You know what I mean? Because it was when I first started, I was like, yo, how do you get funny? They was like, yo, get stage time. Then you go to the spot to get stage time, and they're like, nah, you, you're not going on tonight. Like, nigga, I can't get funny if I don't get stage time. So then it just got to the point where I just said, you know what? I got enough, I got enough gift of gab to go and talk to these club owners and these restaurant owners and make my own stage, my own mic. And that's what I did. So I did start producing my own show. So this Friday, I'll be, if you all are in the uh, DMV area, I'll be at 505 Hampton Park Boulevard in Capitol Heights. It's called The Taste of the Caribbean. Um, it's a guy send, me, send me a link. Send me a link, brother, or Troy, or tell Troy to send me a link so I can put it up on my channel. Like I've been uh, promoting some of my uh, local guys uh, that are doing stuff over here in Orlando, man. Uh, send me a link and I'll post I it up you. on the channel. I got you. So you in Orlando right now? Well, yeah, I'm, I'm close to Orlando. I'm, I'm, I'm closer to Daytona Beach. I'm in Central Florida, but I'm closer to Daytona Beach in, in one of these suburbs out here. They got, they, got but, comedy, uh, they got comedy clubs down there? Uh, yo, actually, um, what's his name? Uh, a lot of the weigh-ins and, and, uh, and, and people be, be going to the Orlando comedy clubs, man. Like, I, I literally get free tickets uh, sent to me all the time. Yo, they be roasting the shit out of people, bro. They be roasting the shit out of people, bro. Like, yo. I sit on the side because I ain't even trying to get into that heat, bro. You know what yo, I'm saying? Cause I'm you know, yo, this, this motherfucker I seen, uh, that he, I remember him from In Living Color, bro. I can't remember his name off the top right now, but he's a regular over there. This mm -hmm. motherfucker straight started eating niggas french fries, bro. Oh, wow. He started eating niggas french fries, bro. And, and they were, they was African dudes and they was making fun of them, but they, they were like rich African dudes. And they were just cracking up. And he's making fun of them with, with their whites here. And, but then he gave them a free shirt. And you know what I'm saying? And, and gave them mad credit at the end because they were good sports. They were just laughing. You know what oh, I mean? Wow. But he ate their french fries, bro. Like, all that shit. I'm like, yeah, bro. You, you do that shit to me. I'm, I'm, I'm yo, I'm <laughs> sorry, I might snap, bro. You know what I mean? But that's why I stay on the side. I don't even fucking go up there, like in the front like that. You know what I mean? Now, we're go, we going to link, man. And, and we on social media, too. So we're going to link. And I should, I'll come down there, join in, and try to hit one of them clubs. You just, I just need to know the name of it so I can talk to the... Um, yeah, the yeah. No, I, can send you, I can send you that information. I literally, I, I literally get at least two to three emails every single week on who's the upcoming people or, or if I get free tickets or something like that. Because they sell oh. free tickets... To fill it up, like just just to make sure, just say like if it's slow or whatever. Oh yeah, that's what we do. For the residents. Yeah, yeah, that's what we do because we we make money. We, we comedy clubs make money off the food and drink, not off the energy. Exactly, uh, exactly. You exactly. So if you coming in there and you definitely gonna bring a date with you, so you are gonna definitely that's gonna be two plates, four drinks, probably your appetizer, maybe a dessert. Yeah, I'm gonna sell all that to you. Yep. yep. <laughs>
That's true. That's true. That's exactly what happens. It, it, it's usually tickets for like at least uh, from between two to six to eight people. You know what I mean? Right. And right. it's free tickets, but but then we got to buy the food. We got to get the drinks, of course. Of you know what I mean? Of course. Of course. Six to eight people? That's a $400 check just at one table. Exactly. Exactly. Nah, Especially yeah, for a three or four hour show, drinks. right? Yeah, you make money off the food and drinks, especially if you got somebody that they want to see because they coming out. They're going to put it on, they're going to come out, and they're going to enjoy themselves. So, no, I, th that's that's why I'm looking at opening my own comedy spot. Yeah, man. Yeah, You're doing it smart, though. You're doing it smart. Because yeah. especially if you're going to the locals, you know what I mean? If you're going to the mm -hmm. locals and don't got to do with that, you know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you can't really, like, uh, uh, always, like, depend on somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they're worried about their own money. You know what I mean? That's They're what, not really worried about yours. You know what I mean? That's what I had to do. And then, you know what I mean? This is like boxing. Comedy is like boxing because it's an individual sport. And a lot of people don't understand. They're like, oh, no, nah, you be with that crew. You be with this crew. Yeah, but I get on stage by myself. What are you talking about? Fuck who I ride with. Fuck who I roll with. But when I get on that stage, it's just me you laughing at. You ain't laughing at them. You ain't laughing because I'm with them. You laughing because I'm funny. It's me. So, now nah, I get it. I get it. So I had to. I definitely That's one of the reasons that I, I loved. Uh, I loved the interview with uh, with Freeway Rick Ross is because he likes tennis and I like tennis. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, tennis is a great sport. Yeah, because it's one on one, just like what you're talking about. It's one on one. It's one on one mm -hmm. combat. You don't have to depend on the team. It's just That's you it. and them. That's it. You know, and a lot of people don't understand that. So it's it's. It's about basically at the end of the day, how how masterful are you about your craft versus the the opposition, right? Mm -hmm. And that's that's what's dope about that, man. I love that. That's what's up, man. I appreciate you for logging on and checking us out, man. No um, problem, Troy. I, I, I get at you, bro. I gotta get ready to put my All son right, in the bed. He's still downstairs playing uh, Fortnite because he, yeah, he know I'm you. alive. He's thank taking advantage. Right thank you, on. thank you, thank you. You know, yeah, you know I spoke to your brother, so so he's probably listening to this. Oh no, nah, that's what's up. I love you, bro. Yeah. If you listening, I love you, boy. So All right, nah, brother. it is what it is. Yep. Y'all be easy, man. All right, brother. All right. Appreciate All talking right. to you, man. Yes, sir. Always, major. Yes, sir. Sorry to catch you on the back end, but uh, no, nevertheless. No, nah, it is what it is. Everybody be cool. All cool. right, man. All right, peace. All right, ladies. Who is it? You shutting it down? Yeah, man, I'm shutting it down. I got to get up for work in a little. Well, I'm just shutting it down because I'm going to sleep for a little bit. Then I'll be up around 3 o'clock or something on me. But yeah. Mm, you being an old geezer, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm still pretty. I'm still pretty. But yeah, man, thank you. Thank you for coming out, man. I had to stay quiet, no, man. Of course, I can't, man. Yeah. I, I didn't I didn't actually I didn't actually since I, like I was telling them I was I was a little busy and I, I didn't even actually see that uh I didn't get the uh notification or I, I got the notification but I didn't actually see it because it was on the background and I get so many notifications that I was like, okay, I, I just left it in the background. Then I look, I'm oh shit, the Troy Graham experience is on. So I clicked on it, and then I see your cousin on. I'm like, oh, shit, bro. Fuck, man, I need to jump on because, you know what I'm saying, me, me and him will get along. You know, we would break things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. He I was like, fuck, man, like, like, I can't believe I missed all this time. So so now I have to rewind it to watch the whole hour because I need to hear what he was talking about, you know? Yeah, so, man. Uh, you know, so, yeah, it cost me an extra hour slacking on that. He always one. says you're cool, man. So, yeah. But, yeah, man, if you could get something going in Orlando, then he's, he's, good. he's as good as his word. He'll come down there. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, like like I said, man, uh, send him my info, man, because uh, at, at the end of the day, um, the Orlando Improv is uh, very serious, man. I can't remember the, the, the name of the dude, man, that I've seen. I've seen. I went there a couple times already, and um, yeah. and they funny as fuck, bro. And they not they not about that that bullshit, bro. Like if you if you're in the front anywhere near their vision, bro, they're gonna fucking like yo. They they straight up gonna kill you with with jokes, bro. They're gonna kill you, bro. That's why you stay in the third or fourth row and just chill out. That's what I'm saying. Like they, they, they have no fucking hold bar, bro. They, they, this is like no, there's no uh, fucking limit to what they're gonna say. So it's off the chain over there, like in the Orlando Improv. So you better stay away from the front row unless you got thick skin. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, nah, I, I even came on camera most of the time for this interview, man. I think I'm gonna come on camera some more, but. You know what? I got to talk to you about something on the back end, you and Rebel, but I ain't going to do it tonight. I'm going to go chill out, talk to my son, and I'm going to 
put these clothes away and head out. And ladies and gentlemen, and everybody that showed me came through in the chat room, much respect, man. As as you can see, there's been another Troy Graham experience. I said I was gonna wrap it up in an hour, but you got an hour and a half of uh, a whole lot of talking and networking and joking. And you found out some information about me. Yes, I went over there and ate a lot of food. I love this mom, man. His mom was a great lady, you know. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, you, you gotta you gotta block some of those uh bots though, man. You got Della Coda and then um right before I came in, Blackburn Cantu, bro. And then uh if, if you can, bro, just uh I, I know I know that we've been talking about it um as far as like how how I be here, how often I be here and giving the rents, but at the end of the day, man, you yeah, have I'm to so work that out how, because uh how do you do I that? See because that I pressed happening. your name. Yeah, because I pressed your name, but I didn't it didn't come up. Like it says star. <laughs> Put it says put user on timeout and block user. All right, so yeah, I think you're doing it wrong. But uh, are you doing it from your laptop when you do that? From my tablet, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. you got to do it from your phone. But I, what I'll do is I'll drop a comment on your um on on this video once it ends, and then I'll just okay. drop a comment because you could do it that way as well. You know what I mean? But uh, but at the end of the day, like usually uh, when it comes to the chats, the chats you want to do that on your phone. Okay, cool, cool. I can uh, do that, man. But all right, brother, I let mean, me jump in. Those, so do... those people in the meantime, bro, because uh, they're in the chat and, and uh, they're, they're fucking. Oh, I already did. Oh, hold on. Already so, uh, yeah, Della Coda got blocked. Blackburns can too. Yep, yep, they got blocked. I see them. Yeah, they got blocked. Yeah. I can see it on the bottom. Yeah, I'm gonna do my outro now, and that'll be it, brother. I am gone for the night. Another uh, great episode so of what? Yeah. Uh, right, who's next? Who's next? Who's I don't know who's next yet for Major Key. I think I got to work on that, but I'll let you know by, by Monday. No, no, no. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll top it up because I've been working on something in the background as well. So uh, we'll top okay. it up just hop in, uh, so we don't cross paths with that one. Okay. Okay, then, man. All right, man. Holla at me. Peace. All right. All right. That was Major Key. He stopped by and, uh, the Duke of Comedy was here for a while, and of course, the folks in the chat, we had another great show, another great episode. Like I said, it's a conversation piece, man. It's not a, anything set in stone over here. Once we get going, good Lord takes the spirit wherever it wants to go. So thank you for stopping by, everyone. Hope you enjoyed it. I know I did. I thank you for your time, and I'm, I'm gone. That was all right. The one main thing that you have that you would want people to remember you by, or not one, but the those things that are dear to you that you would want to be remembered as. I guess I guess just my words, man. You know what I mean? Just my words, and if. People remember my words, they'll remember me forever, you know? God by nature, my raised in nature, you know? But, um, it's like, you know, to live forever, you, you, you gotta set, you know, not, not set trends, but you gotta apply yourself a certain way and you gotta do certain things, you know? Maybe, maybe when I'm going 20 years from now, somebody might be telling, telling their little son, oh, yo, you think shorty back? 